Hello and welcome to this free preview lecture series of my on-demand FE Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course. In this lecture, we are going to discuss transformer, which is arguably the single most important device in the entire power system network. Before we dive into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video and click the bell icon and the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Hello and welcome to part one of our multi-part lecture series on the topic of transformers. In this lecture, we will be discussing basic principle and equivalent circuit of transformers. Transformers fall under section 10, power systems. We will start this lecture with a discussion on principle of operation types and applications of transformers. Then we will dive into ideal transformers. We will discuss the difference between ideal transformer and practical transformers. And at the end of this lecture, we will discuss equivalent circuits of transformers. Principle of operation types and applications of transformer. Transformer is a device which is central to power systems engineering. It converts given AC voltage into another AC voltage of same frequency. And the principle of operation is based on two or more coupled windings which are magnetically linked. Okay, they're electrically isolated, but they have magnetic coupling. So they are linked through flux, which is uh, the process is known as mutual induction. And um, that's something that is inherent uh, property of coils. And when we discussed inductance, that's when we um, uh, looked at uh, the ability of a coil to store energy. Okay, so that's where the mutual induction really comes from. AC current in the primary winding produces a magnetic field which induces voltage in the secondary winding. Transformers can be classified into various different types based on their applications and construction and size and ratings and so on. Uh, we would classify transformers into these two broad categories, instrument transformers, which are subdivided into current transformers and voltage transformers. In PE power exam preparation, you need to know quite a bit about these uh, type of transformers, and they're primarily used for protection and metering. Then we have power transformers, which are further classified as dry type transformers or liquid or oil filled transformers, and these are primarily used for transmission and distribution. So the big uh, transformers that um, you see uh, in substations uh, like these, these are actually power transformers. But the small CTs and the small VTs, uh, which when you open the switch gear or the MCCs, they actually belong to the instrument transformer category. Ideal transformer. So as I mentioned, for the most part, ideal transformer is what we are concerned with for LFE electrical. And uh, for P power exam preparation, you need to know the equivalent circuit inside out. But in the case of ideal transformer, the way it's different from a non-ideal transformer is that it doesn't have any losses, okay? And these losses show up in the form of hysteresis or eddy current, magnetizing curve is um, vertical with no saturation, okay? In the case of practical transformers, there is saturation. And if you remember this type of diagram, maybe when you took the FE electrical, um, sorry, when you did your uh, undergraduate studies, um, that's because of the magnetic dipoles, right? They they get frozen in certain direction and then when it's reversed, it really doesn't trace it, its path back. But that's uh, practicality of transformers. Then it's assumed that the leakage flux in the core is zero and the winding resistance is zero. Okay, I will briefly touch upon the equivalent circuit of the transformer where you will see some of these assumptions being thrown out of window okay so for our ideal transformer the ratios are pretty simple you apply voltage on the primary and then you get voltage on the secondary and uh, the ratio of the primary voltage to the secondary voltage is equal to the ratio of number of turns on the primary to the number of turns on the secondary and in the case of current the ratio of the secondary current to primary current is equal to the ratio of primary turns to the secondary current uh, secondary turns so there are some equations for ideal transformer which are worth knowing. Probably the most important equations we've already seen here, which tells us that the ratio of the voltage on the primary to the secondary is equal to the turns ratio. The voltage of current on the secondary to the primary is equal to the turns ratio as well. Okay. Uh, in terms of ideal transformer, your input real power is equal to Vp times Ip times cosine theta P. 
that indicates that this is the power factor angle on the primary but for the ideal transformer secondary angle and the primary angle are the same and we can simply drop the subscript and show it as angle theta so p out would be equal to v s times i s times cosine theta similarly in the case of s in uh, apparent power input power is equal to v p times i p apparent output power is equal to v s times i s and s in is equal to s out because efficiency is equal to 100 percent okay there are no losses now another concept which is worth understanding and actually you're expected to know is uh, the reflected impedance okay and the reflected impedance formula is this that basically tells us that if we have an impedance zs on the secondary the impedance seen by on the primary side okay if you have the transformer in between would actually be equal to a square times zs so it would be multiplied uh, by a square so if your turns ratio is 10 then 10 square would be equal to 100 so when you look at that impedance from primary it would be 100 times the actual impedance on secondary and that's because of the turns ratio let us now briefly discuss practical transformer so practical transformer has all the um, realities or the simplifications uh, sorry the complexities which we sort of ignored in the ideal transformer okay for the ideal transformer we said that there were no copper losses well guess what for practical transformer you have copper losses and these are modeled by rp and rs so on the primary uh, i've just taken one single binding okay and uh, so you have uh, rp and rs these are the parameters which actually result in the resistive heating in the winding okay and contribute for copper losses contribute to the copper losses then we have eddy current losses which is because of the resistance resistive heating in the core it is modeled as rc okay then you have hysteresis loss which is loss due to energy required for rearranging magnetic domains i mentioned um, this type of leafy structure magnetic dipoles have to be rearranged every time the ac current actually changes its uh, direction and that is indicated by xm okay it's inductive property and finally we have the leakage flux which basically means that there is imperfect link between primary and secondary windings remember these windings are linked only magnetically there is no electrical connection it's just magnetic connection and by leakage flux which is modeled as xp and xs on primary and secondary respectively what we mean is that this flux is not linking 100 percent okay so, so there's some leakage and that is modeled by xp and xs okay so this is how our equivalent circuit of a practical transformer would look like okay i will start with again some of the easy stuff we have primary winding resistance copper losses and secondary winding resistance copper losses and core resistance again copper losses okay so on the primary winding i have this resistor which is rp on the secondary winding i have this resistor which is rs and within the core i would have some current flowing through the core right and this is rc now in terms of leakage flux i mentioned that there would be leakage flux on both uh, the primary and the secondary side so we will add xp jxp is the reactance and xs um, on the secondary and in the core we have this jxm which is the magnetizing losses in the core okay and the primary winding and the secondary winding obviously has one significant component that links them and that's your ideal transformer okay so your ideal transformer is sandwiched between the imperfections of your primary and the secondary windings and the core okay so you can insert the ideal transformer and then add these components and that becomes your practical transformer so if you look at this again you have the primary voltage being applied but now this primary voltage doesn't apply directly to your terminals of the ideal transformer right so you have these imperfections that need to be taken into consideration. So you have the resistive losses in the winding. You have the leakage flux in the winding, right? On the primary. 
and then you have eddy current flowing through the core. You have magnetizing current, um, which uh, is because it results in hysteresis. And then on the secondary, you have secondary resistance and you have leakage flux, which is modeled by the secondary inductor. And in between that is our ideal transformer, which is actually doing the transformation. So it has NP ratio NS and it can do step up or step down voltage transformation for us. But we need to take all of these imperfections into consideration when we are dealing with real life transformers. And obviously on the secondary, we have our load connected and Vs will basically appear across it. So in this lecture, we discussed principle of operation types and applications of transformers. We looked at ideal transformers, some of the very fundamental and basic equations, and then we looked at practical transformers and the equivalent circuit. Now, although the equivalent circuit, as I mentioned in the lecture, is not necessarily a part of the FE electrical and computer exam specification, but if you understand it right now, it will help you in your P power exam preparation, because over there you will have to know the equivalent circuit of transformer, the losses and everything in a lot of detail. So this is a good foundation to lay right now for your P-Power exam as well. If you found this preview lecture helpful, I am confident that you will also greatly benefit from the full course that contains over 150 lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCS F Electrical and Computer Exam specification. You will also get access to tons of quizzes and mini exams in this course that will help you get additional practice along with a bonus full-length computer simulated practice exam. This streamlined and well-reviewed course comes with an amazing 30-day full refund policy, no questions asked. On top of all this, I've also included a special discount link in the text section of this video. 